We are tuned to the Indra Press channel of Akashvani. In the backdrop of World Heritage Week, we now present a talk in English by Ms. Komal Pandey, Deputy Creator, National Museum, Delhi. And the topic is Revisiting Takshila, a World Heritage Site. Revisiting Takshila, a World Heritage Site. We all know Takshila as one of the ancient centers of learning. Its name spurs a deep sense of reverence for the ancient education system and the concept of university system that existed in early historic India. Takshila was world-renowned seat of knowledge, a melting pot of diverse intellectual cultural ideas where scholars and students traveled from afar to learn proficiency in subjects as varied as grammar, logic, philosophy, medicine and surgery. We may think Takshila was only a university site, but Takshila was much more. Today, it stands as a testament to cultural and artistic achievements of the ancient Indian civilization. Originally located in the northwest frontiers of undivided India, at present, the site lies in Pakistan. Given its rich historic splendor, grandeur and significance, Takshila was designated as a World Heritage Site in the year 1980. The variety of architectural, sculptural, epigraphic, that is written inscriptions and other minor antiquarian remains like jewellery, coins and utensils that were unearthed during the excavations at Takshila have been a subject of study since their discovery. The name Takshila is recorded in early historic sources as Takshashila and comes from the word Taksh meaning to cut and Shila meaning stone. Therefore, Takshila meant city of cut stone. Takshila became a sanctuary for travellers from around the world, especially from Central and Western Asia. The ancient Chinese, Greek and Roman texts all reference Takshila with a mix of historical and mythical tales, including Indian textual sources like the Ramayan, Mahabharat, Jataka and others. Takshila has a long history, stretching from 5th century BCE to 2nd century CE, during which its fortunes rose and fell as different empires gained control over it. The strategic location meant that Takshila was part of many powerful dynasties over time, including the Persian Achaemenid Empire, the Mauryan Empire, the later Indo-Greek, Indo-Scythian and Kushan rule. In the late 1800s, the first excavation at Takshila was carried out by Sir Alexander Cunningham, a British officer who used the detailed and meticulous accounts of Chinese travellers to locate routes and sites in that region. Later, another British officer, Sir John Marshall, carried out series of excavations in Takshila starting from 1913 to 1934 and unearthed artifacts from three cities, namely Bhir Mound, Sirkap and Sirsuk, besides the Buddhist stoop and monasteries that were located within the limits of Takshila. The Bhir Mound was the most ancient of all city sites, while Sirkap was built around 2nd century BCE. The third city, Sirsuk, emerged in the early Kushan times. The rich archaeological material discovered from all these sites now lies in many international museums across the world. The National Museum New Delhi is a proud custodian and preserver of Takshila antiquities and legacy. This includes coins, sculptures, jewellery and other artefacts that are on display in the permanent galleries. In the National Museum collection are the bent bar coins from Takshila that are the earliest found coin types and are dated as early as circa 6th century BCE. As the name suggests, these coins are slightly curved strips of silver with symbols punched on them. The sculptural arts of Takshila in the National Museum India include the magnificent Gandharan sculptures made in schist stone and stucco showcasing varied iconographies and episodic depictions. Interestingly, in the collection are very unique copper and silver inscriptions inscribed in ancient Indian script called Karoshti that tells us the names of important events, places, people of that period. 
To celebrate the heritage and splendors of Takshila's golden past, the National Museum India has organized a special temporary exhibition, Hiranyamai Gold Ornaments from Takshila, under the series of small exhibitions from our reserve. This temporary exhibition showcases the finest of gold ornaments discovered from city sites of Bhir Mount and Sirkap at Takshila and offers a glimpse into the aesthetic essence of Indian subcontinent. Inaugurated by Dr. Buddha Rashmi Mani, Director General of the National Museum and curated in-house by the National Museum team. The exhibition's title Hiranyamaya is derived from the words Hiranya, gold, and Maya, made with. Hiranyamaya extrapolates the presence of gold which laces every artifact in the exhibition. In aesthetic terms, Hiranyamai expresses the state of the beholder brimming with exquisite beauty of intricately detailed gold ornaments displayed in the exhibition. The exhibition stands as a testament to the profound reverence to anonymous goldsmiths and the pinnacle of gold craftsmanship dating back to 4th century BCE to 1st century CE Takshila as homage to Takshila and its splendid sculptural heritage of the Bijwell sculptures carved impeccably in schist stone, the delicate gold ornaments are displayed against the dark schist colour as an ode to the stone carvers of Takshila. However, cautiously shifting the locus from schist to gold, the exhibition is envisioned as an adorned body evoking the spirit of gold artistry. Barring the two showcases at the beginning and towards the end, the exhibit progresses in the sequence of head to toe, offering insights into how sophisticatedly hair, ears, neck, hands and waist were adorned. This jewellery spurs us to imagine how the art of adornment was perfected in the ancient times. The multifarious aesthetic sensibilities, that is Indian, Shaka, Parthian and Greco-Roman, in the jewellery findings of Takshila, reaffirms its place as a melting pot of multiple contemporaneous cultures of the period. The artifacts from Takshila have often been exemplified as characteristic of Greco-Roman influence with the prominent Indian features being largely overlooked. To draw attention, the exhibition displays two amulets with swastika motive and a necklace depicting vase of plenty a Poonaghatta or a Kalasha at the centre. Although found, featured in many ancient cultures across the world, the motive of swastika and Poonaghatta always enjoyed special place in the vis visual lexicon of Indian subcontinent dating back to centuries before these specimens. And unlike in its other found places, these symbols remain relevant in India even today highlighting the aspect of unbroken continuity of symbolic narrative these exhibits hold special significance for indian audience the ornaments in the exhibition elucidate design technology and the art of jewelry making that proliferated in india made of gold sheet these ornaments show brilliant use of encrustation techniques with gems like garnet rock crystal, turquoise, carnelian, chalcedony and others. The meticulous craftsmanship in the rendering of variety of beads and precious stones, design, motives and patterns, sophisticated clasps and lapidary arts, minute engravings, repuse and filigree work make every exhibit awe-inspiring. From the minutest of the bead to strikingly large size ornaments, Takshila must have bloomed in gold, which the exhibition endeavours to relive. The National Museum India Jewellery Exhibition thus presents a captivating journey of ancient Indian gold from Takshila, enshrining a precious and miniature version of Takshila in the heart of Delhi. Revisiting Takshila, a World Heritage Site You just heard a talk by Ms. Komal Pandey, Deputy Curator, National Museum. This broadcast came to you from the Indraprasth channel of Akashwani.